planners. How did you end up ruining someone's wedding? Story 1. I remember the day like it was yesterday. My wife was the unofficial wedding coordinator for her friend's big day, managing the chaos like a seasoned pro. She stood at the back of the venue, ensuring the bridesmaids knew when to make their grand entrance down the aisle. Meanwhile, I was stationed off to the side of the stage, in charge of the music. We kept in touch over the phone, coordinating each step to ensure everything went off without a hitch. Now let me set the scene for you. On stage, there was this unity candle setup, a beautiful display with two small candles on either side and a larger one in the center. The idea was that the bride and groom would light the big candle together during the ceremony, symbolizing their union. Simple, right? Well, it was supposed to be. Things started smoothly. The groom's mother stepped up and lit one of the smaller candles without a hit. Then it was the bride's mother's turn. She gracefully walked up to the stage, took her candle, and lit the unity candle instead. My wife and I noticed it at the same time. Her eyes widened as she whispered urgently into the phone, Fix it. I quickly devised a plan. I had to act fast but discreetly, waiting for the perfect moment. I kept my eye on the bride as she began her walk down the aisle. Every single guest's eyes were glued to her. It was my cue. With ninja-like stealth, I crept up onto the stage, trying to be as invisible as possible. My heart pounded in my chest, but I stayed focused. In one swift motion, I blew out the unity candle and lit the smaller one that was supposed to be burning. Then, just as quickly and quietly as I had come, I slipped back to my spot. Nobody saw me, not even the bride. The ceremony continued without a hitch. The bride and groom lit the unity candle together, just as planned, and the guests were none the wiser. I stood there, feeling a mix of relief and exhilaration. For the rest of the day, I was dubbed the Wedding Ninja, a title I wore with pride. After the ceremony, my wife and I exchanged knowing glances, both of us trying to suppress our laugh. We didn't even need to say anything. We both knew we had just pulled off a minor mirror. The rest of the wedding went smoothly, and by the end of the night, everyone was dancing, laughing, and celebrating without any clue of the near disaster that had been averted. Later, as we sat down to dinner, my wife leaned over and whispered, You saved the day, you know that? I just smiled and shrugged, feeling pretty good about my quick thinking and stealthy moves. Story 2. My sister is a cake artist, and let me tell you, her creations are nothing short of masterpieces. She once made a coconut creme cake for a bride's wedding in June that was absolutely stunning. It was a three-tiered vision of white perfection, adorned with delicate coconut flakes and intricate designs. However, she had to work one of her other jobs during the actual wedding, so I was given the honor of transporting and setting up the cake. I arrived at the venue early, carefully cradling the cake in its box as if it were a new The setup went off without a hitch and I felt a swell of pride as the cake took its place of honor in the reception hall. Guests admired it as they walked by, and I could see the bride beaming as she caught a glimpse of it. Everything seemed perfect, but then disaster struck. It was an unusually warm June day, and as the ceremony stretched on, I noticed something alarming. The beautiful coconut creme filling inside the cake was beginning to melt. I watched in horror as the once sturdy tears started to slide, transforming the elegant cake into something that resembled the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Panic set in. I had to act fast. I flagged down the venue coordinator, a woman with a calm demeanor and a clipboard. She took one look at the cake and immediately understood the gravity of the situation. Together, we carefully moved the cake from the display table to the kitchen, just moments before it would have toppled over completely. It was a close call, but at least the cake was now in a safe place. However, it was far from presentable. With the clock ticking, I raced to the nearest Tom Thumb. I remembered they made beautiful deli cakes and hoped they had something that could save the day. Luck was on my side. I found two coconut cakes that, while not as grand as my sister's creation, were still lovely. I purchased them and hurried back to the venue. In the kitchen, I became a makeshift cake artist. I combined the two cakes, doing my best to create a cohesive and elegant piece. It wasn't perfect, but it was pretty enough for pictures. The collapsed cake, although a mess, had fallen on a sterile surface and was still edible. The kitchen staff helped me clean it up and cut it into pieces that could be served later. By the time the reception started, the new cake was in place. Guests admired it, none the wiser to the drama that had unfolded behind the scenes. The bride and groom posed for their cake-cutting photos, smiling and blissfully unaware. I stood to the side, trying to calm my racing heart, which had been pounding in sheer panic for nearly two hours. Later that evening, as the newlyweds enjoyed their first dance and the guests mingled, I finally allowed myself to breathe. The bride came over to thank me for everything, still completely oblivious to the near disaster. I just smiled and told her it was my pleasure. In the end, all that mattered was that she was happy and that the wedding had gone off without a hitch, at least from her perspective. Story 3. I remember attending this one wedding that turned into a bit of a nightmare, all because the photographer didn't show up. I mean, you'd think with something as important as a wedding, 
every vendor would triple check their calendars, right? Well, not this photographer. She penciled in the wrong date or something equally ridiculous. The bride and groom even held off the ceremony for an entire hour, trying to get in touch with her. Calls went unanswered. Texts were left on read. And as it turned out, she was on location somewhere else, completely unavailable. Now, I'm not a nuclear physicist, but I witnessed a meltdown that day, and it was the bride's mother. Oh, she was livid. I half expected steam to start pouring out of her ears. Her face turned shades of red I didn't know were possible. I honestly thought she was going to explode, and I wouldn't have been surprised if we all got caught in the blast. The tension was so thick, you could have cut it with a knife. In the midst of all this chaos, someone had the bright idea to make a run to Walmart. Desperate times call for desperate measures, right? They bought out every single Kodak disposable camera they could find. You know, those little ones that you have to wind up after every shot? Yeah, those. Suddenly, everyone at the wedding was armed with a camera, ready to capture the day in the most candid way possible. And let me tell you, it turned into quite an event. Guests who'd never held a camera in their lives were now budding photographers. The father of the bride, who had been pacing nervously, started snapping photos of the guests. The groom's buddies took turns trying to outdo each other with creative angles and goofy poses. Even the kids got in on the action, capturing moments from their unique, knee-high perspective. The bride, initially teary-eyed and stressed, eventually started laughing. She decided to embrace the situation for what it was, an unforgettable twist on her special day. The atmosphere shifted from tense to festive. The candid photos, though far from professional, had a charm all their own. People were more relaxed, their smiles more genuine. The poses were natural, the moments real. Story 4. I've worked at countless weddings, from quaint beach gatherings to extravagant half-million-dollar galas in Manhattan. But there's one wedding that stands out in my memory, not because of its grandeur, but because of how the wedding party managed to make things difficult for everyone involved. It all began when I met the couple at a picturesque location near the beach. The woman told me they were planning a family reunion and we went over the menu, budget, arrangements, and everything else. They put down a 50% deposit, with the remaining balance due 48 hours before the event, which was scheduled for about four months later. Around a month before the supposed family reunion, the truth came out. The woman confessed that it was actually a wedding. She said she'd read online that the wedding industry overcharges, so it was better to pretend it was a different type of party. I was taken aback, but agreed to make some adjustments now that I knew it was a wedding. As the 48-hour countdown approached, I noticed the remaining balance hadn't been paid. I almost decided to cancel, but instead, I chose to front the money myself. I covered the cost of the rentals, food, staff, and everything else, hoping they would pay me eventually. The wedding day arrived, and still no payment. The ceremony and reception kicked off, and the couple didn't mention the payment at all. On top of that, they and their guests were incredibly rude and abusive to my staff. This was a party of about 150 people, and they were hitting the bar hard, pounding vodka like it was water. Within two hours, the place was a drunken mess. People were hammered, complaints and abuse were coming in non-stop, and my staff, though experienced, were struggling to keep things under control. It was clear that this type of behavior was far from typical, even for the rowdiest of weddings. As the night wound down, I had to confront the bride and groom about the payment. The bride and her mother, both heavily intoxicated, tried to argue for a discount, claiming they shouldn't have to pay the full amount. At this point, there were at least 50 guests who were visibly drunk and the situation was getting out of hand. I offered to involve the police to sort out the payment dispute, which seemed to finally get their attention. They grudgingly handed over about $5,000 in cash, which was bizarre, but at least it covered my costs. They left soon after, leaving a trail of chaos behind them. It became clear to me that these people thrived on conflict and drama. They wanted a miserable experience so they could have someone to blame, and they got exactly what they were looking Out of all the weddings I've worked at, this one takes the cake literally and figuratively. The aftermath of that wedding was a mix of relief and disbelief. My staff and I managed to clean up and pack away the remnants of the night, all while shaking our heads at the absurdity of it all. Despite the abuse and the last-minute payment issues, we maintained our professionalism and ensured that the event, for better or worse, went off without a hitch. Story 5. I remember attending this one wedding that everyone knew was destined for disaster. The atmosphere was tense, and you could sense the unease among the guests. The mother of the groom took it to a whole new level during her speech at the reception. She stood up, raised her glass, and with a sly smile, predicted that the marriage would last ten months. It was the most uncomfortable toast I've ever witnessed. The room fell silent, and you could almost hear the collective intake of breath. Surprisingly, the couple managed to stretch their doomed union to 18 months, but it was clear to everyone that they were struggling. Fast forward a few months, 
and these newlyweds showed up at our wedding. I was hoping they might have sorted things out, but boy was I wrong. The groom was on a mission that night, hitting on every girl in sight, including my wife. His behavior was shameless, and it was clear that their marriage was in its death throes. I remember the look on my wife's face when he tried to flirt with her. She was polite but firm shutting him down immediately. But it wasn't just her. Every woman he approached was visibly uncomfortable. It was like watching a train wreck in slow motion, and there was nothing anyone could do to stop it. He was relentless, oblivious to the growing irritation and disgust around him. We didn't see them again after that night, and frankly, no one was surprised when we heard they had split up not long after. It was sad, really, but also a relief. Their breakup was inevitable, and everyone knew it, including them, I think. The groom's antics at our wedding were just a symptom of a much deeper problem in their relationship. Story 6. I can top a lot of these wedding horror stories. When my little sister decided to tie the knot, her fiancé's aunt-in-law, who happened to be a wedding planner, offered to handle the arrangements. Since the wedding was in his home state, and we didn't know many people there, my dad agreed to let her plan it. He set a generous budget of $35,000, thinking it would cover everything. Fast forward to the day before the wedding, and she drops a bombshell. She hands my dad another bill for $35,000 and declares that the wedding won't happen unless he pays up. You can imagine the shock and fury. Luckily, my dad had just sold some farm equipment from our dairy, so he had the cash on hand. Reluctantly, he paid the additional amount to avoid ruining my sister's big day. The wedding itself turned out to be beautiful. Everything seemed perfect on the surface, and for a moment, it felt like the extra money was well spent. But then the call started coming in. The DJ, the photographer, and several other vendors reached out to my dad saying they hadn't been paid. It became clear that the aunt-in-law had pocketed the money. My dad, a man who values family ties, decided not to press charges, even though he was seething. However, he knew how to handle the situation in his own way. Our family is well known in the dairy industry, and a lot of her business came from our network. Quietly, my dad spread the word about what she had done. Before long, she found herself losing all her business connections within the industry. Story 7 I'm not a wedding planner, but I have a funny story from my own wedding that still makes us laugh today. It all started with the DJ, who we later found out had bailed on us at the last minute. The owner of the DJ service had to scramble and sent someone she didn't even know. And let's just say, it totally backfired. The day was going perfectly until after all the toasts and formalities. My spouse and I went up to the DJ to tell him we were ready for our first dance. He looked at us blankly and asked, Uh, what song are you dancing to? I told him the song, and he replied, um, I don't have that panic set in for a moment. Luckily, I had driven my car to the reception even though I hadn't planned to, and I had the CD with our song in my car. Crisis averted. We managed to have our first dance, and it was beautiful. But once the dance floor opened up, things took a turn for the bazaar. The DJ started playing the worst selection of music imaginable, including several songs from our Do Not Playlist. It quickly became clear that this guy was not just unprepared. He was high as a kite on meth, completely out of it. The dance floor, which had been full of energy, emptied out almost immediately. People were milling around, clearly uncomfortable with the awful music choices. The whole vibe of the reception took a nosedive. Then, out of nowhere, the DJ played Billie Jean by Michael Jackson. Miraculously, people came back to the dance floor and started dancing again. Seeing this, his method-up brain decided it was a great idea to play the entire Thriller album. After about four songs, I had to step in and stop him. I walked over and politely but firmly told him to change the music. He looked at me like I was speaking a foreign language, but eventually he complied. Despite the DJ disaster, it didn't ruin the wedding. In fact, it became one of those quirky, memorable moments that everyone talked about for years. At the time, it was definitely annoying and stressful, but looking back, it's hilarious. We ended up with some great stories and a unique twist to our wedding that no one could have predicted. The rest of the evening smoothed out and we managed to salvage the party. Friends and family stepped up, taking turns playing songs from their phones and making sure the dance floor stayed alive. It turned into a more intimate, personal affair, with everyone chipping in to keep the celebration going. Now, whenever we hear a Michael Jackson song, especially from the Thriller album, we can't help but laugh and remember that crazy night. It's funny how something that seemed like such a disaster at the moment can become a cherished memory. It taught us to roll with the punches and find humor in the unexpected. Story 8. It was the morning of my brother's wedding, and the day couldn't have started any better. All the men were out on the golf course enjoying a sunny, beautiful day. The women were at salons getting their hair and nails done for the big day. My brother was having one of the best rounds of his life. It felt like the stars had aligned perfectly for this occasion. But then, the best man's phone rang. He answered it cheerfully, thinking it was just a routine call. It was the rental place, informing us that the tuxedos were ready for pickup at the specified time. As a Canadian military man, I was wearing my uniform. 
so no tucks from I was spared the impending chaos. He ate. Everything seemed fine as the best man went through the checklist over the phone. Pants are pressed. Shoes shined. Vests the right color. Jackets had the flowers to be pinned on. Then he paused. His face went through a rapid succession of colors that looked like something you'd see in a nightclub. White, green, red, purple, and then a shade of crimson murder I'd never seen before. The jackets were not ready and had not even been ordered. The wedding was in four hours. The best man hung up the phone and, without a word, sprinted to his car. He drove back to the city in what must have been record time, covering a 45-minute drive in about 20 minutes. He had the original contract in his car, which he presented to the rental company, proving that the jackets were indeed part of the order. Back on the golf course, the rest of us were left in a state of disbelief and rising panic. My brother, trying to stay calm, continued playing, but the tension was palpable. Swearing was inevitable, and the mood shifted from relaxed enjoyment to urgent concern. Meanwhile, the best man was pulling out all the stops at the rental place. He threatened, cajoled, and probably invented a few new forms of persuasion on the spot. The rental place, realizing their colossal screw-up, scrambled to fix the situation. They managed to procure the jackets from another rental company, but it was going to be tight. With less than an hour to go before the wedding, the best man arrived with the jackets. Everyone scrambled to get dressed, and the atmosphere was a mix of relief and hurried chaos. Somehow, in the midst of this whirlwind, everything fell into place just in time. The jackets were on, the flowers were pinned, and we made it to the wedding with minutes to spare. Story 9. Obligatory. Not a wedding planner, but I've got a story from my brother's wedding this summer. It was a big out-of-town affair, and my son was the ring bearer, and my daughter was the flower girl. As the groomsmen were getting changed, I realized I'd left my son's dress shoes at home. Panic set in as I weighed the option. Should he walk down the aisle barefoot in socks or in his super awesome Spider-Man light-up shoes? We decided to go with the light-up shoes, hoping it would add a bit of charm to the ceremony. Meanwhile, my daughter, who was four at the time, was having her own crisis. An 11-year-old bridesmaid had been taunting her saying that her flowers were fake while everyone else's were real. My little girl was heartbroken and began to cry, her excitement turning into distress. So, there we were, minutes before the ceremony, with my son in his flashy Spider-Man shoes and my daughter in tears. The show had to go on. My son, trying his best to be brave and supportive, took his sister's hand. As they started down the aisle, she continued to sob, and to make matters worse, she was now throwing her fake flowers like baseballs. It was a sight to behold. My son with his shoes lighting up with every step, and my daughter, hurling petals left and right, looked like they were part of some surreal, tearful parade. The guests couldn't help but smile, some even chuckling softly at the unexpected spectacle. I could only imagine my brother's reaction from the alt. Here he was, waiting for the perfect, picturesque moment, and instead he got a barefoot boy in superhero shoes and a crying flower girl on a mission to clear her basket as quickly as possible. It was far from the elegant procession everyone had envisioned. Despite the chaos, there was something endearing about it all. The innocence and unpredictability of children added a layer of genuine emotion and humor to the ceremony. It broke the tension and brought a sense of realness to the day. After the ceremony, my brother came up to us, laughing and shaking his head. Only your kids, he joked, giving me a pat on the back. The rest of the day went smoothly, and the kids' antics became the story of the wedding. People approached us all night, sharing their favorite moments and complimenting my son's light-up shoes. Story 10? I wasn't a wedding planner but I did have a stint as a photographer's assistant that gave me a story I'll never forget. It happened during the speeches at a wedding, a moment when everyone's attention was focused on the speakers. The photographer, my boss, asked me to retrieve his backpack full of equipment from an unused stage at the back of the room. No problem, I thought. I could be quick and discreet. I snuck in, grabbed the backpack, and began to make my way back. That's when disaster struck. The bag was unzipped, and as I lifted it, Lenses and flashes spilled out with a thunderous crash onto the wooden floor. The noise echoed through the room, drowning out the heartfelt speech being delivered. Every head turned to look at me, and I stood there, mortified, as pieces of expensive equipment rolled under tables and chairs. My face must have been as red as a tomato as I scrambled to pick up the scattered pieces. Guests watched in complete silence, some with sympathy, others with amusement. I crawled around, ducking under tables and between legs, trying to gather everything as quickly as possible. Finally, with my arms full of camera gear, I made my escape to the hallway where the photographer was waiting. He took one look at the pile in my arms and immediately noticed that one of his flashes was broken beyond repair. It was his oldest piece of equipment, the first big investment he had made in his career. He sighed, visibly pained, but didn't say much. We both knew it was an accident, albeit a costly one. Despite the setback, we managed to continue taking photos for the rest of the night. The photographer had planned to use two flashes for some of the shots, 
but he adjusted his approach and made do with what he had left. The night went on, and while the guests eventually forgot about the incident, I couldn't shake the feeling of embarrassment. The crash during the speeches and my frantic efforts to retrieve the equipment undoubtedly left an impression. It was far from the professional image I had hoped to project. I still got paid for the job, but I decided that wedding photography might not be my calling. The pressure and potential for mishaps were too high for my liking. After that, I switched gears and focused on waitressing at weddings. I had my fair share of minor mishaps in that role, but none were as spectacular or as public as the equipment spill. Serving drinks and clearing plates was far less nerve-wracking than dealing with thousands of dollars worth of photography gear. Story 11. I used to work for a company that did wedding photography and video. One time, we had a bride who went all out and bought our biggest package. It included 16 hours of coverage, capturing every moment from the time she woke up until the end of the reception. Our top photographer was assigned to cover the event. The wedding went off without a hitch, and the photographer got some amazing shots. After a long day of shooting, he headed home, but decided to stop for a quick bite at a burger joint. He parked his car, went inside, and enjoyed his meal. When he returned to his car, his heart sank. The window was smashed, and his camera, along with all the memory cards containing every photo from the day, was gone. Panic set in as he realized the magnitude of what had happened. He immediately called our office, and we scrambled to come up with a plan. The bride and her mother were informed, and as you can imagine, they did not take the news well. Tears were shed, screaming ensued, and it felt like the weight of the world was on everyone's shoulders. All the beautiful moments of their special day were gone, stolen in an instant. We refunded all their money, but it was clear that the loss was much deeper than financial. They didn't care about the money. They wanted their memory. No amount of compensation could replace the stolen photos. The joy and excitement of the wedding were overshadowed by this devastating loss. The following days were filled with sorrow and regret. The bride's dream of reliving her wedding through photos was shattered. This incident hit us hard. We felt awful for the bride and her family, and it was a harsh lesson for our company. In response, we implemented a new rule. No stopping anywhere until the memory cards are safely back at the office or at home. We couldn't risk another couple going through such heartbreak. Story 12. I'm an event planner, and I tend to steer clear of weddings because there are just too many variables that can go wrong. But even in other events, you sometimes encounter situations that make you wonder if you're in the right profession. Take a recent ball I organized. Everything had been meticulously planned down to the tiniest detail. The seating arrangements were perfect, the decorations were spot on, and the schedule was running like clock. We were all set for a fantastic evening. Then a group showed up 45 minutes late and demanded an entire table after everyone had already been seated. It wasn't just a simple request either. They threw a full-blown tantrum in front of all the other guests, including the client who had hired us. It was one of those moments where you could feel the eyes of everyone in the room on you, waiting to see how you'd handle the situation. Despite all the planning and preparation, my team and I were caught off guard. To keep the peace and avoid further disruption, we decided to give up our own table. We had been working for 19 hours straight and had been looking forward to finally sitting down for a bit. Instead, we found ourselves scrambling to accommodate these demanding guests. But their antics didn't stop there. Throughout the night, they went on to abuse the band and DJ, making unreasonable song requests and hurling insults when their demands weren't met instantly. They were loud, obnoxious, and intent on making everyone else's night as miserable as possible. It was a stark reminder that no matter how much planning you put into an event, the guests can always find a way to fudge it up. We had done everything within our power to ensure a seamless evening, but some things are just beyond control. The unruly group cast a shadow over what should have been a delightful and elegant ball. The client, though understanding of the situation, was visibly disappointed. We did our best to mitigate the damage, but there was only so much we could do. The rest of the guests were also affected, and the atmosphere was noticeably dampened by the constant interruptions and outbursts from the troublesome group. Story 13 rant incoming. I'm getting married in less than a month, and I've got to say, our wedding planner has been a major source of stress rather than a stress reliever. When we hired her, we hoped she'd help us navigate the complexities of planning and keep us on track. Unfortunately, that hasn't been the case. First off, she promised to remind us about upcoming payments and deadlines. We managed to pay everything on time without any issue, but she never brought up any of the payments except for hers, which ended up being a week late. We were also expecting her to come up with unique design ideas for our wedding, but she only ever sent us two concepts, both of which were straight from my fiancé's Pinterest boards. It felt like she didn't put in any effort to tailor the designs to our vision or offer any fresh ideas. One of the main reasons we hired a wedding planner was to stay within budget. We were clueless about the costs associated with weddings and wanted someone to manage our expectations and keep our spending realistic. Instead, we are now about 50% 
over budget. She didn't provide any guidance on what things should cost or suggest more affordable alternatives. Reminders for important tasks were also lacking. She never told us we needed to get our marriage license. We had to figure that out on our own. It seemed like every critical piece of the planning process fell through the cracks unless we took the initiative. We've managed to stay on top of things because we're organized and proactive. But instead of easing our burden, the wedding planner has added to it. We're only a few weeks away from the wedding and we still haven't planned the ceremony detail. All the reservations are made, but we don't have a play-by-play -play for the day. It's frustrating because we were counting on her to handle these details. I'm having a talk with her today because we still need her help on the wedding day and firing her this close to the event isn't an option. However, she has done about 10% of what we were expecting. Instead of being someone who kept everything organized for us, she's been more of a person we had to keep in the loop. We wanted a wedding planner to alleviate stress and make the process smoother. Instead, it feels like we're babysitting her and handling everything ourselves. We've had to double check everything and ensure nothing is missed because she's been so unreliable. The whole experience has been a lesson in what to avoid when choosing a wedding planner. Story 14. My mom was the wedding coordinator at our church for several years, and I somehow got roped into helping. Over the years, we saw our fair share of ruined weddings, but most of the time, the issues were blown out of proportion by the brides themselves. Let me give you some examples. There was the bride who wanted live butterflies released during the ceremony. We warned her that the butterflies would likely not survive until the wedding day, but she insisted. Sure enough, by the time of the wedding, the butterflies were all dead and she had a meltdown. Another bride freaked out because she wasn't allowed to have dancing at the reception. This was clearly stated in bold letters in the contract since our church is quite traditional and run by older folks. Despite signing the agreement, she seemed shocked and outraged when we enforced the rule. Through these experiences, I've learned a few crucial steps to avoid a wedding disaster. 1. Don't trust the DJ completely. Every DJ I've worked with was either high, incompetent, or both. Always have a backup plan. Keep a CD or an iPod with your essential music ready to go. It's your safety net in case the DJ messes up or doesn't show. 2. Read your contracts. Thoroughly, contracts will be enforced to the letter. Make sure you understand every detail, especially any restrictions or rules. If dancing isn't allowed, no amount of arguing on the day will change that. It's better to know and accept the terms beforehand. 3. Communicate clearly and early. If something isn't right, speak up as soon as possible. It's your day, and issues can't be fixed if you don't voice them. Don't be afraid to be the bad person if it means ensuring your wedding goes smoothly. 4. Document all change. Any modifications to a contract should be in writing and signed by all parties involved. Verbal agreements can be forgotten or disputed, but a signed document is binding. 5. Avoid inviting drama. If there are people who you know will cause drama, don't invite them. They might throw a fit over not being invited, but at least it won't ruin your ceremony or reception. 6. Skip the butterflies. Butterflies are delicate and unlikely to survive until the wedding. Opt for something more reliable and just as charming, like bubbles. They're popular for a reason. They're easy, fun, and stress-free. I've seen brides panic over the smallest things, turning minor issues into major crises. But with proper planning and clear communication, most of these problems can be avoided. It's important to stay realistic about what can be controlled and what can't. Things might go wrong, but with the right preparation, they don't have to ruin your day. Story 15. Caterer checking in. I've catered over 100 weddings and never really ruined anything or had any big disasters. But I do have a story of a client ruining my night. It was a destination wedding at a private residence, four hours from my home base at a 25,000 square feet vacation house near a ski resort. The clients were friends and some of my original regular customers at my restaurant. In fact, they had their first date at my place. The bride was very insistent on having a non-traditional reception. She wanted a running cocktail party with different food and drink stations throughout the day and night with no traditional sit-down dinner. The main meal part of the night was small plates, served dim sum tapas style. We had 10 items on the menu and my staff would walk carts up and down the tent passing out various plates. If a cart went by with something you liked, you took it. If not, you waited for the next cart. In our last meeting with the clients and the wedding planner, everyone decided it was important for the bride and groom to give a speech welcoming everyone and briefly explaining how dinner would work. On the day of the wedding, despite being reminded, the bride neglected to do this. When my staff descended upon the tent, people were confused, grabbing anything that came by their table and getting upset that they didn't get other things. After the initial confusion, things settled down and actually went quite well. After dinner, the bride and groom gave thank you speech. When the bride got up to speak, the first thing she said was that she was sorry dinner didn't go as she had planned and hoped everyone wasn't disappointed. I was on the edge of the tent with the wedding planner and my heart just sank. I wanted to hide in a corner. The wedding planner was pissed 
and took the bride aside to tell her how inappropriate her statement was. Here's the kicker. Dinner was 1.5 hours late because after the initial pictures, the bride didn't like her eyelashes and disappeared for over an hour to redo her makeup. During this time, we ran out of appetizers. We had enough for a one-hour cocktail reception, not a 2.5-hour one, not to mention how the delay affected the timing of the dinner food because they were friends, especially the groom, who was paying for the wedding, approximately $125K. They asked me to defer $10K of my $25K bill for a week after the wedding. Come final payment time, predictably, the bride throws in a faux apology. I couldn't cash that check fast enough. TL. The bride throws me under the bus to her guests, blaming me for the dinner confusion and disappointing her guests, despite her own actions causing the delays and issues. Story 16. I was the ring bearer at a relative's wedding when I was a kid. What I remember most about that day isn't the joy of the celebration or the excitement of walking down the aisle, but the excruciating pain of a severe ear infection. I was on a lot of medication, and the best I could do was muster enough energy to walk down the aisle at the beginning of the ceremony. After that, I had to lie down in a pew, completely wiped out and miserable. The whole event is a bit of a haze. I recall refusing to get up for pictures, despite the coaxing and pleading from various relatives. I just couldn't do it. My head was pounding and my ear felt like it was on fire. All I wanted was to close my eyes and wait for the pain to go away. From my perspective, it felt like I was letting everyone down. I knew how important this day was for my relative. And there I was, the sick kid who couldn't fulfill his duties as the ring bearer. But looking back, I realized that my refusal to participate in the photos probably didn't ruin anything. Sure, it might have been a minor hiccup in an otherwise perfect day, but weddings are filled with little unexpected moments. People were probably more concerned with the happiness of the couple than with the kid lying in the pew. Despite my foggy recollection, I've heard stories from my family about that day. They often laugh about how I was such a trooper for even making it down the aisle. They recall the wedding as a beautiful celebration, with everyone having a great time despite my small medical crisis. If anything, my little episode became part of the wedding lore, a story that gets told at family gatherings to this day. Remember the wedding when you were the ring bearer with the ear infection, they'll say? and we'll all chuckle about how I stubbornly refuse to move from the pew. It's funny how things that seem like a big deal in the moment can become just a small part of a larger, happier memory. That wedding was about love and family, and no amount of ear infection or medication could overshadow that. It's a reminder that while weddings can be meticulously planned, it's the unplanned moments that often become the most memorable. Story 17. Last year, a friend of mine got married, and it was quite the ordeal mostly because of the bride's mom. She was an emotional wreck throughout the entire process, and since she was paying for everything, all the decisions were hers to make. This led to a lot of tension, as she fired several wedding planners before finally settling on one she found suitable. Unfortunately, this also meant that her daughter, the bride, had little to no say in what her own wedding would be like. On the day of the wedding, the mom was relentless in her complaints. Everything seemed to be wrong in her eyes, and she made sure everyone knew it. Her negative energy was palpable, and cast a shadow over what should have been a joyous occasion. During the reception, things took an even more bizarre turn. While the best man was delivering his toast, which was heartfelt and full of good wishes for the newlyweds, the bride's mom stood up and interrupted him. She apologized to everyone for the wedding, saying how sorry she was that it didn't turn out as she had hoped. The whole room went silent, and people looked at her, bewildered, wondering what on earth she was talking about. To most of us, the wedding seemed perfectly fine, aside from her constant complaints. This public display was the final straw for my friend. The embarrassment and frustration from her mother's behavior were too much. The bride and groom were visibly upset, and the atmosphere at the reception took a nosedive. The joy of the day was overshadowed by the mother's inability to let go and let her daughter have her moment. Story 18. I used to work as a banquet server, and while I've never seen a wedding planner outright ruin an event, some of them are absolute nightmares to deal with. They often use the banquet staff as scapegoats for every little thing that goes wrong. It's an incredibly stressful job, largely dependent on the clients who can be difficult themselves. One event in particular sticks out in my mind. The photographer for this wedding was unbelievably creepy. He kept following me around, trying to stick his business card on my trays or even in my pocket as I walked by. Things got worse as the night went on. He got drunk and started snapping photos of me and the other girls I worked with instead of focusing on the bride and groom, especially during their first dance. It was so uncomfortable. We were all on edge, fearing that the bride and groom would file complaints about the lack of professionalism. Fortunately, the couple didn't seem to notice, or if they did, they didn't say anything. But the whole experience left a bad taste in our mouths. We were there to do our jobs and help create a beautiful event, not to fend off the advances of an unprofessional photographer. 
I also have a story from a friend's wedding where the photographer completely dropped the ball. He came highly recommended by many, but ended up being a massive disappointment. He sent a few proofs, but never delivered on his contract. He skipped out on several people afterward, leaving my friend without the wedding photos she had been so eagerly anticipating. It was a devastating blow after what had otherwise been a perfect day. These experiences taught me a lot about the importance of choosing the right vendors for an event. It's not just about their skills and the quality of their work, but also about their professionalism and reliability. The right photographer or wedding planner can make all the difference in creating a seamless and enjoyable experience. Conversely, the wrong one can cause unnecessary stress and even ruin parts of the event. One thing I've learned from working these events is the importance of communication and clear expectations. Clients need to do their homework and vet their vendors thoroughly. Recommendations are great, but sometimes you need to dig a little deeper to ensure that the person you're hiring is not only talented, but also professional and dependable. Story 19. Not exactly answering your question, but I've got a story from my sister's wedding last Saturday that still makes my stomach churn. I was entrusted with videoing the whole event, a task I took very seriously, or so I thought. Everything was set up perfectly, and I was ready to capture every magical moment. When my sister began her walk down the aisle, looking absolutely radiant, I hit the button to start recording, or so I thought. In reality, I hit pause. I didn't realize my mistake until much later. As she made her way to the front, Surrounded by the beauty of the church and the emotional gazes of our family and friends, I was blissfully unaware that the camera wasn't capturing any of it. Once they reached the front and the ceremony began, I felt a rush of satisfaction. I pressed what I thought was the pause button to stop the recording during the quieter parts of the ceremony. In reality, I had just started recording. So, I ended up with an unintentional recording of my feet shuffling and some mumbled apologies as I fumbled with the camera. By the time I figured out my mistake, the ceremony was well underway. I quickly corrected it and managed to get the rest of the footage, but the damage was done. I had completely missed recording her grand entrance and the walk down the aisle. One of the most important parts of the whole day, my heart sank as the realization hit me. My sister, the bride, had trusted me with this crucial task, and I had botched it in the most significant way possible. The rest of the footage was fine, but nothing could replace that lost moment. I knew she was going to be devastated when she found out, and the thought of her reaction made me dread their return from the honeymoon. I've been beating myself up about it ever since. I've considered every possible way to break the news to her gently, but there's just no easy way to tell someone you messed up such a critical part of their wedding day. I know she'll be furious, and rightfully so. This was a once-in-a-lifetime moment that I can't ever give back. I've learned a hard lesson from this experience. Double-checking and making sure the camera is actually recording is crucial, especially for such important events. I've replayed that moment in my mind countless times, wishing I could go back and do it right. To anyone out there tasked with capturing special moments, whether it's a wedding, a birthday, or any significant event, take this as a cautionary tale. Check and recheck your equipment. Make sure you know exactly how it works. The pressure to get it right can be immense, but it's worth taking that extra moment to ensure everything is set up correctly. As for my sister, I'm bracing myself for her reaction when they get back. I'm hoping she can find it in her heart to forgive me, but I know it's going to take time. In the end, I can only apologize and learn from my mistake, making sure that something like this never happens again. Story 20. When I was younger, I worked as a caterer at a banquet hall that hosted weddings. I have a lot of stories from those days, but this one stands out as my favorite. It all started with a beautiful floral arrangement the bride had supplied. Each table was adorned with bamboo candle centerpieces, that looked like they were purely for decoration. However, the mother of the bride was adamant that the candles should be lit. She insisted that the flickering light would add a touch of elegance to the ambience. Reluctantly, I went around lighting the candles on about 25 of the 50 tables. As I was making my way around the hall, I suddenly heard a strange crackling sound behind me. I turned around to see that the bamboo centerpieces were catching fire, one after the other. The crackling intensified as the flames spread quickly from table to table. Panic set in as we realized the extent of the fire hazard we were dealing with. This was just 10 minutes before the hall was scheduled to open, and all the guests were gathered in the lobby, looking in at us through the glass doors. They watched in horror as we frantically ran from table to table, trying to put out the fires. The whole scene must have looked like a chaotic dance, with staff members rushing around with fire extinguishers, spraying the tables and stomping out embers. The air filled with smoke and the elegant decor was now covered in a fine layer of white residue from the fire extinguishers. The floral arrangements were charred, and the beautiful bamboo centerpieces were reduced to blackened, smoldering remains. The pristine setup that had taken hours to perfect was now a mess, and we were left to deal with the aftermath. Guests, understandably, 
were worried and confused. Some of them had expressions of sheer disbelief as they watched the frantic efforts to control the blaze. It wasn't the calm, elegant beginning to the reception that they had envisioned. The mother of the bride who had insisted on lighting the candles was beside herself, alternating between apologizing profusely and blaming the hall for not warning her properly. The bride and groom, thankfully, were still blissfully unaware of the chaos inside as they were taking pre-reception photos outside. We managed to get everything under control just as they walked in. While the hall wasn't in the perfect condition it had been earlier, we did our best to rearrange and clean up quick. The couple noticed the commotion but were gracious enough not to let it ruin their day. They took the incident in stride, focusing instead on their celebration. Story 21. To make the church look prettier, she wrapped pillar candles with fake flowers. It seemed like a lovely touch, but it turned into a disaster waiting to happen. Midway through the ceremony, the candles burned down enough that the flames reached the fake flowers. The flowers caught fire really, really quickly. Everyone was in shock, watching the flames spread. But to her credit, my buddy's mom acted fast. She vaulted over the pews like an Olympic athlete, sprinting to the front of the church. She managed to extinguish the fire quickly, but not before giving everyone a good scare. Later on, I was talking to my buddy about the whole fiasco. He told me he had seen his mom wrapping the candles before the ceremony and immediately recognized it as a fire hazard. He had tried to warn her, saying, Mom, those flowers are going to catch fire. Her response was typical of her confident, dismissive nature. Don't worry, honey. The candles are dripless. It'll be fine. Obviously, dripless doesn't mean fireproof. The flames didn't care about the dripless feature and went straight for the flammable materials. Despite her confidence, she learned the hard way that you can't ignore basic fire safety, even for the sake of aesthetics. The rest of the ceremony went on without further incidents, but the near disaster left everyone a bit on edge. The bride and groom were understandably shaken, but relieved that it didn't end worse. It became one of those stories that everyone who attended the wedding would remember and recount for years to come. My buddy's mom, despite her initial mistake, became something of a hero for her quick reaction. However, it was a clear reminder that sometimes, less is more when it comes to wedding decorations, especially when fire is involved. The lesson here is simple. Safety first, aesthetic second. Story 22. I'm not a wedding planner, but I have to tell this story somewhere. I once attended an incredibly fancy wedding at a country club. The groom and his cousin, who was also the best man, had started a successful business together, and were both worth several million dollars, despite being in their early 30s. The groom probably spent between $100K and $200K on the wedding, which, where I'm from, is a significant amount of money. The event was going smoothly until it was time for the best man's speech. The best man had gotten completely trashed by this point. If you've ever seen movies like The Wedding Singer or America's Funniest Home Videos, you might have an idea of what an embarrassing best man's speech looks like. This guy managed to surpass all of those by a mile. He started his speech by immediately trash-talking the groom. Then, as if that wasn't bad enough, he launched into stories about the groom's numerous romantic escapades, boasting about how many girls the groom had messed around with and emphasizing what a big cat hound he was. The icing on the cake was when he revealed, in front of everyone, that the groom had cheated on the bride multiple times. By this time, we were only about three minutes into the speech, and the atmosphere had turned from celebratory to horrified. The other groomsmen quickly realized they needed to intervene. They rushed to take the mic away, but the best man wasn't having it. He started running around the dance floor shouting, it's my time, it's my time now, let me finish. It was absolute chaos. Eventually, they managed to pry the microphone from his grip, and two of the groomsmen escorted him outside, effectively ending his disastrous speech. The whole scene was surreal, like something out of a nightmare. I could see the bride and groom trying to keep composed, but the damage had been done. Guests were left in shock not knowing how to react or what to say. To make matters worse, there were two videographers hired for the wedding, capturing every cringe-worthy moment. I'm sure there's a video of this somewhere, and I keep waiting for the day it pops up on the internet and goes viral. It was, without a doubt, the most awkward and insane situation I've ever witnessed at a wedding. The rest of the evening was tense, conversations were hushed, and people kept glancing around, unsure how to proceed with the celebration after such a bombshell. The bride and groom did their best to salvage the night, but you could tell they were deeply embarrassed and hurt. That wedding is now infamous among our circle of friends and family. It serves as a stark reminder of the importance of sobriety and discretion when it comes to giving speeches at such significant events. No one ever saw the best man in the same light again, and his relationship with the groom and bride was undoubtedly strained after that night. Story 23. I've worked at a lot of weddings in various capacities, ranging from modest celebrations with budgets of a few thousand dollars to extravagant affairs costing hundreds of thousands of dollars. Through all these experiences, 
I've noticed one key factor that often determines the success of a wedding, the attitude of the wedding party. Weddings where the couple and their entourage have a positive, go-with-the-flow attitude tend to go smoothly, even if minor hiccups occur. It's like their good vibes create a buffer against mishaps. I've witnessed countless little miracles at these weddings. From last-minute dress fixes to unexpected weather changes that turn sunny just in time for an outdoor ceremony, things just seem to work out for people who approach their big day with a positive mindset. Conversely, I've also seen wedding parties with negative attitudes, where everyone seems to be on edge, looking for something to go wrong or someone to blame. This attitude tends to create a self-fulfilling prophecy. Problems get magnified and tensions run high. For instance, I remember one wedding where the bride and her mother were so fixated on potential disasters that they turned every minor inconvenience into a major issue. The flowers arrived slightly off color, meltdown. The DJ played one song out of order, blame game ensued. In those cases, it was clear that the negativity wasn't just a reaction to wedding day stresses. It had been brewing long before the big day. Whether it was unresolved family issues or a perfectionist mindset, the bad attitude cast a shadow over the entire event. Even the most meticulously planned weddings can't withstand the corrosive effects of constant negativity. I've learned that you truly get the wedding you and your wedding party deserve. A positive, flexible attitude not only makes the day more enjoyable for everyone involved, but also seems to invite good fortune. One of the most heartwarming weddings I worked at was for a couple who remained cheerful despite several last-minute changes. Their cake collapsed in transit, but they laughed it off and served cupcakes instead, which ended up being a huge hit. Their good humor was infectious, and guests had a wonderful time. In contrast, another wedding with a similar cake mishap spiraled into chaos because the bride couldn't let go of her vision of perfect. Her distress dampened the mood, and what could have been a funny, memorable moment became a source of stress and disappointment. Story 24. At my cousin's wedding, we faced a nightmare scenario that none of us will ever forget. Neither the photographer nor the videographer showed up. As it turned out, the wedding planner had forgotten to pay them, leaving my cousin without any professional documentation of her big day. The realization hit her as she walked down the aisle, ready to join her groom and the preacher. Her face went from a radiant smile to sheer panic. She looked around, searching for the photographers, and when it became clear they weren't there, she nearly had a complete meltdown right in the middle of the ceremony. Myself and the other bridesmaids had to step in quickly. We discreetly surrounded her, whispering reassurances and reminding her that the day was still about her love and commitment, not just the pictures. We did our best to talk her down from the edge of despair. In a stroke of luck, many of the guests had brought cameras and someone even had a video camera. We rallied the troops, so to speak, and the guests stepped in to fill the void left by the absent professionals. Aunts, uncles, and friends took on the roles of impromptu photographers and videographers. They captured candid moments and key events with an earnestness that added a special touch to the day. Despite the initial chaos, the wedding ceremony continued beautifully. The guests' efforts to document the day turned out to be heartwarming. They captured the raw, genuine emotions of the day, something that professional photographers often miss in their quest for perfection. The laughter, the tears, and the joyous celebrations were all recorded, albeit not in the polished style one might expect. After the ceremony, during the reception, we all shared a collective sigh of relief and some nervous laughter about the day's mishaps. My cousin, though still upset about the planner's oversight, was grateful for the spontaneous support of her friends and family. She realized that while she didn't get the professional photos and videos she had dreamed of, she got something arguable.